if you're a regular watcher of the series, you know my feelings on subwoofers. They are absolutely necessary. There isn't a speaker out there without its own built-in subwoofer that is full range enough to qualify to not need a subwoofer. You need a subwoofer. And he has taken someone's advice and put that in, good for you. Those Van der Steens will just come alive in a way that they would never have a chance to do without that SVS sub. Now, having said that, I again, I'm going to stand up in the pulpit here and, and, and preach. We don't want to hear the subwoofer as a separate entity. I don't want to know that your sub is there. If I sit down, you invite me into your home, and I sit down and I listen, and uh, there's a you know somebody bowing a bass, or there's they're plucking on a in a uh, double stand up bass. I want that to be smooth, and I want to be able to with the lights down low. I want to be able to picture the guy on the stand up bass and just every pluck, whether it's the lowest string note or the higher one, I want them all to sound like they're coming from that instrument in an imaged space behind the loudspeakers. The moment that he goes boom, 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 and it sounds as if all of a sudden uh, the, 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 you know, he, he, we stuck a, uh, an amplifier inside of that device, then, then you've failed. So it has to sound real. It has to sound just like a guy standing there playing bass or uh, a, a synth hit, you know, where you oh, and it all has to sound like it's coming from the synth. We do that by making sure that the level and the crossover are such that it never draws attention to itself. And generally, what that requires is us to have some overlap. So on your Vandersteens, they say they go down to 64 hertz. Okay, that's great. It's not, first off, it's not, it's rarely flat. That's probably its 3 dB down point. That's how we measure those things. So it goes like this and starts to roll off. And at 64 hertz, I'm just guessing here, it's 3 decibels down. And then it continues off depending on its slope, probably something like 12 dB per octave. You want that subwoofer to come up into the range where it is crossing over and there's a bit of overlap and that's a bit tricky because too much overlap and we're going to get a peak at that point, too little and we're going to get a dip and a discontinuity between the two. So it's, it's really just something you got to do by ear. Here's what I do. I start with the sub down about as low as it's going to go. So maybe it's like 30 hertz. If that's, if that's where you have the lowest point on, on your low pass on the subwoofer. And I start playing my favorite tracks. My, uh, I really like, uh, there's a couple of them that I have, but Boz Skaggs with his um, Thanks to You is a great track because in it there's a, an electronic piano piece and you can hear him just going down the scale and there's one last note that he hits and on most systems it's just ooh, it's just it's gone it's in the recording I and mean, the, the, the keyboard is, is hearing it but you probably aren't so i don't want that over exaggerated i don't want that under exaggerated i want to hear that note and when you can get that note right by turning you know and i just keep turning up the, the low pass filter until that note comes in and gets to be about where I want it and I make sure it's not too loud, then pretty much it, it's going to work for everything else. But we all have our favorite tracks. Uh, by the way, if, you, if you're looking for favorite tracks, if you're looking for recommendations that I've had for various types of voicing and setup, just Google uh, Paul's Picks. So that it'll, it'll come up with a list from one of my Paul's posts that'll give you a whole, I don't know, there's 12, 15 of them on there. And I've had three or four of those, and I'll do more of them. But just Google Paul's Picks, and, and it'll come up for you. All right. Hope that helps. Thanks. Bye-bye.